Thanks. You can hear me? So I'm also going to talk about bandits, obviously, uh, and a really, really simple setup. Um, so this is like the simplest thing you could imagine. So it's, it's a de-armed bandit problem. Of course, we all use different notations, so I have to tell you. Uh, it's a de-armed bandit problem. There are n rounds, which we know in advance. And we have it is just the action that you choose in round t in some way. And we would like to make the regret small, which is the expected pseudo regret. So it's the very simple thing. And the purpose of this talk is to analyze a really old algorithm, which is the, the Gittins index horizon algorithm, the finite horizon Gittins index, which is a, a Bayesian algorithm. So this is a little bit like Dan's talk. We have a Bayesian algorithm. We want to make the fre frequentist regret small uh, is the goal. So what is this Gittins index? So, so Gittins index actually comes from an even simpler setup, which is called the one-armed bandit problem, uh, which sounds pretty boring, except that the one-armed bandit problem is actually a two-armed bandit problem where you have two, two arms, and, and you know the return of the second arm. So you know mu2, but you don't know mu1. And, and in the Bayesian setting, you have a prior on the unknown mean. And in this talk, everything is Gaussian. So of course, we use a, a Gaussian prior, uh, which means we can co compute the posterior. And then you have what is the optimal Bayesian action in this setting. And so this has been known already for 50 years or 60 years. Um, and this is called the finite horizon Gittins index. And what you want to do is you want to choose the first action, the one which you don't know the return of, as long as this, this gamma, which depends on the, the prior mean, the prior variance, and, and the horizon, is larger than mu2. Okay, so this, this value looks pretty hard to interpret. Uh, one way you can think about it is, is gamma is the price you would be willing to pay every round to, to play this game up to some stopping time of your choice. So you, you might want to explore a little bit. If the reward looks promising, then you keep playing. If it looks, looks bad, then you stop. And gamma is how much you would be willing to pay to play this game. Okay, so this has already been known for a really long time. And of course, gamma depends on just the variance, the mean, and, and how many rounds there are to go. Okay, so this is a very simple setting. And now we make it like slightly more complicated. So, so now we have a prior on all of the means. So now we say we don't know anything. We have a prior on them instead. And okay, what does the Bayesian policy do? The Bayesian policy minimizes the, the expected regret with respect to your prior. Okay, so that's what you would like to do if you're a Bayesian, um, but you can't. It's, it's very hard to compute this thing. So some sort of ad hoc idea is, okay, we're going to maximize the Gittins index instead. And it's this very famous, the result is if you have discounted rewards and an infinite horizon, then this is Bayesian optimal. So that's very cool. Uh, but that's not true in the finite horizon setting, but it's sort of approximately Bayesian. So this has been conjectured, and you can see it empirically. Uh, and there's some theory as well that's in this talk. Um, OK, so this is, this is really great. So it's not quite Bayesian, but it's sort of semi-practical. And it's empirically superb. Like, this thing really works well. Um, so what's going on? Like, we want to understand why is this so good in a frequentist sense, uh, which is the purpose of this talk. And so the main results are coming from bounding this Gittins index. So what does the Gittins index actually look like? Um, and of course, it depends on, on the mean and the variance. And this is sort of the main theorem of the paper is this, this really tight bound that's totally finite time on what the Gittins index looks like, okay, which says it looks okay. It looks like the mean plus some sort of confidence interval, some standard error uh, with a log beta. So beta is like your confidence parameter. And, and how does this compare? In a simple case, so imagine you have a flat prior. So this is the improper Gaussian prior with sort of infinite variance. And, and you play for a little while, and you get rewards, and you update your posterior. And then what the posterior looks like is, OK, the posterior mean is the empirical mean, if you have the flat prior. And the posterior variance is just 1 divided by the number of times you've played that arm so far. And then you plug this into the, into the bound, and you see that the Gittins index has this form. It looks like the empirical mean plus some confidence interval, which if you're familiar with UCB should be really, really familiar. So the, the only tricky thing is what's inside this log. And that's what the approximation gives you. And we can see on the next slide like a more detailed comparison between these two things. So the top one is the UCB index, this very famous algorithm. And the bottom one is, is sort of the lower bound of the approximation that we have. What happens when you plug this in using a flat prior? And so as you see, the first part is this 2 divided by t. This is very standard for UCB. And then in the log, we have something a little bit more complicated. So we have the number of steps to go replaces t. So that's m is, 
is how long am I going to be playing still? That replaces t. And in the denominator, we have some term which is maybe quite large, like the number of times we played and, and some extra log, this log to the half, which looks really, really strange, but is actually real, like that's, that's really there. And, and what can we see? So there are a few observations that you have. So first of all, as the horizon gets close, the bonus gets smaller, which makes sense, right? If the horizon is, is close, then you don't want to spend time exploring because you have no time to exploit later. Uh, okay, it doesn't depend on how long you've played so far, which also makes sense. Like, what to do in the future doesn't really depend what you've done in the past, except for the, the information you have. So that makes sense as well. And finally, it's quite a lot smaller than the UCB index. Okay, and that, that turns out to give you a big performance boost as well. Okay, so this is the other sort of main theorem of the paper, which proves that up to constant factors, you get exactly the same regret guarantee as UCB. So actually, I believe you can prove a slightly stronger bound, but, but this is good enough. So, so up to some constant factor, you get the logarithmic regret, you get the right dependence on the gaps, uh, everything is looking nice. And that, that top result is for a flat prior only. So you can imagine if you have a really bad prior, you should get a bad regret. Uh, but asymptotically, it turns out that you get sort of asymptotically the right constant factor regret. And I sort of tried quite hard to make this c equal to 2, which is optimal, and couldn't do it. And if you're interested, you can talk about why afterwards. Uh, so here's just an empirical teaser. So this is a really simple setting. You have five arms. Four of the arms are suboptimal uh, by some delta. And we compare UCB and Thompson sampling and the Gittins index. And you can see this is a pretty decent improvement. It's about half the regret. Um, and this is a function of delta. So at the very beginning, if delta is 0, sort of every algorithm does really well. If delta is large, then all the algorithms do pretty well as well. And there's sort of this worst case regime in the middle where, where it's hard, where it's hard to do the identification. Um, and this is pretty typical. So you can run all kinds of experiments, and you see the Gittins index is really doing well. And this is also true with the Bernoulli case. So this is Gaussian, uh, but in the Bernoulli, it's also really good. Um, so it seems like a pretty good algorithm. Um, so what's the take home? So the take home is the Gittins index is approximately UCB. Um, and, and also there's some room for improvement in UCB-like indexes. So if you compare these indexes, there's this sort of complicated thing, and this turns out to be pretty good. And of course, you can just use this algorithm if you want something that's really efficient. You use this lower bound as your algorithm, and that's also pretty good. Empirically, that works well as well. OK, so there are some other things. Um, so the Gittins index strategy is not the Bayesian strategy. Uh, but for the case of two arms, I was able to prove that these things are basically the same. So that even the Bayesian strategy gets the regret guarantees. And also, in some sense, it's very close to being the Gittins strategy. Uh, but actually, that's not true as the number of arms increases, which is a little bit surprising. Um, and that's also kind of something quite interesting. Uh, so finally, you can compute it up to horizon 10,000 I managed in the Gaussian case. And you can get some code. And there are some open questions, like whether or not it can be asymptotically optimal, other noise models. Um, and what if you don't know the horizon? Like Everything really depends on, on knowing that in advance. So that's, that's the talk. Thanks. <laughs>